Okay. So, I have a dress that I want to make, and I am super excited. <laughs> materials here. I don't have a super structured plan. It's kind of kind of there, kind of not. Um this is more of like a like a sewing vlog, like a sew with me, like a sit down with a drink and some snacks and we're friends and we're going to we're going to feel it out and I'm going to make a dress also. The gimmick about this dress, like, the thing behind this dress, um, it's just gonna be, like, a sundress, except, like, okay, I was laying in bed the other night trying to get to sleep, it's like 7 in the morning, I had been up all night working, I was editing footage from my last video, also trying to do online school assignments, not fun, up until like 7, it's finally 7 in the morning, I'm like, tired, sleep time, yes, this is me in bed. <laughs> this is me in bed, you know, catching the Z's, as it is. Suddenly, I get an idea, I'm like, what if, dress, but on the back panel of the dress, on the inside are two like little hidden buttons and then the straps have like buttonholes and they're convertible and you, you can do like so. that doesn't you, that's not like it's a pretty simple idea it's a good idea but it's not like revolutionary or anything but to my like massively sleep exhausted tired brain trying to go to bed at 7 a.m i was like teach me i've just unlocked the secrets of the universe um and I was so excited about this idea, like, genuinely so excited about this idea that I couldn't sleep. And I'm, re I'm really excited to make this dress. Like, it's been a couple days. I've been waiting until I can film to start this project, and it's been killing me. And, like, I recognize now that maybe this is not the most, like, revolutionary idea ever, but I'm still super excited. So, like, let's, let's get sewing. So I'm pre-washing it right now, which means I have like two hours that I can't sew. Such a painful, desolate fate. But I have online math that I need to work on. I guess this is whatever powers may be forcing my hand because I don't want to do it because online math is not a good way to learn a wonderful subject that is just not compatible with online learning. So I'm gonna go do that for the next like two hours while I pre-wash my cotton. Then I can get sewing. Okay, so it's actually been more than two hours many hours, and, um, I did some online math like I said I was going to instead of procrastinating, um, and I had a taco dinner, and now I am pinning along one edge of my fabric so that I can get it to fold in half nicely because I'm trying to make a big square, basically. Um, and then from this square, I'm gonna cut a half circle skirt, because I decided that's what I wanna do for this dress. I was a little concerned about the opacity of the fabric. It's still slightly transparent, but running it through the wash and then the dryer um, tightened up the weave of the fabric quite a bit, um, helping with that transparency. Yeah. Hi, baby. Hi, little prince. Nope, not on my phone. Okay, so I finished 
cutting out my pieces. I've got two pieces that are just the full length of my fabric. Um, they're a bit wiggly right now because I tore them along the grain, but that problem should be fixed when I press them because I have to press them to fold them into straps anyways. Um, I have two of every piece needed to make the bodice so that I can line it with itself, essentially. Um, I have two pieces for the um, apron pockets and I have this big piece for my half circle skirt. I'm just like marking the darts in my pattern because it has darts and attaching the bodice pieces here. I'm making um, just one layer of the bodice first so that I can make sure that everything's all, all good, all hunky-dory. And also because at this point I had not decided what I wanted to do to like trim the top, if anything. Um, so that's sort of just what is happening here. So this is where I'm at so far. I made the just one layer of the bodice so I can figure out the strap length. And all I'm doing the longest length on the strap isn't going to be when it's straight like this. Um, it's going to be when they're crossed over like this. So I'm just going to figure out how long those need to be and then maybe add like an inch for just for safety. And then after that, I can go ahead and um, put together the other bodice pieces and put the straps in between and adhere all of that whole scene together. I'm gonna sew up the straps already. Did one. Looking good. Um, feeling good. I'm not gonna do the buttonholes until, um, until I sew the buttons on, just to be sure. Just to make, just to make sure that they're in a good spot. I'm at this top corner of the strap, and what I'm gonna do is instead of backstitching here, I'm gonna put my needle down. Um, and then with the needle down, I'm gonna lift the foot, pivot the strap. And then I'm just gonna sew back down over the line of stitching I already did so that I can backstitch over where I started it. And the reason that I do that is because it just makes this end look neater. The bodice is really cute. It's a little bit puckered here, but I haven't ironed it and I haven't clipped the curved edges, so like I'm not worried about that. It'll it'll be fine. Um and here's sort of I've pinned some of this scallop lace around the top edge just to get like a big idea. It's got sort of almost like a almost like a gun sax thing happening, which I'm a really big fan of. But I just couldn't figure out a way to do the lace and the daisy trim and like make it look good with both of them. So I don't think I'm going to use the daisy chain trim for this project, which like, sad because I really like it, but 
um, I only have a little bit, and I have, like, a wonderful amount of this lace. I have enough to do the top of the bodice, and then also the hem of the skirt, and I just, I just think that's gonna look nicer. But I still wanted something to go, like, front center, and I found while I was, um, getting out my iron, in some of like the sewing supply stuff, I found this little like satin uh, ribbon flower, but I'm thinking that would be really cute. So I think that's what I'm gonna do instead of the daisies because it just it matches a little bit better, um, and I think it'll be nice. Okay, so it is currently like. Almost 6 a.m. It's 5:55. Um, I just wanted to. So I hemmed. I hemmed the skirt. It took a while. Like 30-inch half-circle skirt. It means a lot of hemming. Um, and I right now I just have it pinned to um the bodice, just so I could show you guys where I'm at. Um, this is what it's looking like right now. It's got the silhouette that I was hoping for. I'm really happy with it so far. Um, so I think I'm gonna go to bed. Um, and then tomorrow I will do the lace and the zipper in the back, and the buttons in the back, and, um, I'm having second thoughts about the pockets. So I'll decide on that. I'll sleep on it and make a choice tomorrow on that. So yeah. Okay, I lied and I didn't go to bed. Um, but I'm I'm going to in a minute. I just first I decided I just might as well do the waist seam real quick and attach the skirt to the um garment. I gave myself a very large seam allowance here. This is um three quarters of an inch. What I'm gonna do is trim the bodice seam allowance um like down to like an eighth of an inch or just maybe like a quarter of an inch just small smaller and then i'm gonna take the um skirt seam allowance and i'm gonna fold the edge down and then fold it and i'm going to fell it to the uh lining of the bodice so the stitches won't be visible from the outside and there'll be no raw edges on the inside of my garment. It's the next day. I just finished felling this edge. It's just um, hand whip stitched along the whole edge and the raw edges are encased in there. It came out very nicely. I'm very happy with how it came out. Um, on the front, on the front, you know, I tried not to, um, tried to only catch the lining. There are a few spots, like right there, where I have like little tiny grain size stitches, but they're close enough to the waist that I don't think you'll be able to notice it because it'll be pulled taut. So now I have to go feed my chickens. <laughs> I have been thinking, and remember that little, like, yellow flower? I still think it's cute, but I'm not, like, completely sold on the color, and it's really bright, and I was kind of thinking, like, I'd really like it if it were sort of like a, like a soft pink color, or, like, I don't know, like a blue? So I'm gonna look around and see if I have any different trims, and I can I can steal the green petals from the other one, and then um, I should be able to just, I don't know, make a new one, but basically the same. I don't know, I'll think about it. I didn't find very much by way of ribbon in my stash of stuff, but I did find this um, thin lace trim. 
that is like a blush pink color. And I'm wondering if this might work. My indecisiveness knows no bounds. Um, I pinned the lace all the way around the top of the bodice. Love the way it looks. It's cute. It's good. And then I was looking at, so I did make a little pink flower. It's cute and I will save it if I don't use it for this project. And then I was looking at the yellow one and I kind of like the yellow one like better without the little green, the little green leaves on it. And I was like, hmm. So I replaced the like cheap fake pearl bead that was on it with the real pearl from a broken earring. And I don't know, I like it a lot better than I did before. And I think it- You want, you want- the, to do so I don't know, much, the, do um, kind of monochrome palette, I think just looks a little better than the, the pink one. So then I took, like, I don't know, 10 minutes to make myself a fabric mask, because I was about to go to the park to meet up with my friends, and that's kind of the end of working on this dress for a couple hours here. So, um, I cut my dress in half. <laughs> um, so last night when I got home, there was, um, I finished sewing all of the lace on the top, and I sewed it along the hem of the skirt, and everything was like great, and I was super happy, and I was like, hell yeah. And, um, put it on my dress form, pinned it down. And I was like, oh, there's a piece of lint on the front, right in the middle of the right boob, like, like, like here. And I was like, oh, there's a piece of lint. And I tried to brush it off and it didn't go away. And I was like, that's weird. And it wasn't lint. It was a hole and it was only on the front side. It wasn't on the lining side, which is a good thing, but also bad that it existed in the first place. There was literally a hole. And I was like, why? Um, I tried to darn it. It looked awful. I was so stressed out. I was on the verge of tears at this point, which is why I wasn't recording anything, because I was really stressed and freaking out. It looked awful and bad, and then I tried to see if we had any, like, fusible interfacing, and we didn't have any fusible interfacing. We had some woven, or, sorry, we had some non-woven sew-in interfacing and I tried to like I was like maybe it's actually fusible and it'll be fine and I tried it on a scrap piece of fabric and it was not fusible it was so it interfacing and I was like okay um and I was like I don't know what I'm gonna do I don't know what I'm gonna do uh oh pardon my language um and I cried and then I seam ripped the entire front panel of the bodice out and I cut out a new one. And um, I had to seam rip out the entire felled edge that I had sewn. And that was really painful, like emotionally and physically, because I did a good job and it was really sturdy. So <laughs> frustrated. Um, and so after I f finished putting in the new front panel I just I just went to bed I was like I can't do this and then I got up today and I like gardened with my mom all day and now I'm back and I feel a little better and I'm ready to try and tackle this again I have to sew the lace back down in the front and um I have to pin the skirt to this bodice and sew the skirt back on. It's not the end of the world. I was lucky that I had as much fabric as I did, even though it's not perfect, that I actually had enough to at least make another panel. And I don't I don't know what I would have done otherwise. Um, it's still gonna turn out, I hope. Um, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. I hope. Finally, she's all back together. And there's no holes right in the center of my right boob. 
Um, it does need a good press from where everything's been reinserted. And put all the laces back on. There's the lace all the way around the hem. It was a lot of frustration to get back to this point, but I'm glad that I'm here. And um, my next step is I'm gonna roughly like pin on the pockets and see where they look good and then take it off the dress form and measure and realign the pockets so that I know that they're symmetrical and put the pockets on and then I'm gonna do up the back seam and put in the zipper and then I'm gonna put the buttons on and do the buttonholes and the straps and that's when I'll put the little silk flower on right there and then it'll be done! Yay! This is proof. Never say that you think a sewing project is gonna be easy out loud because God will hear you and he will say no, it's not. It's been a couple days. I waited um, after I finally got everything all reassembled. Um, I haven't done the pockets yet, I just waited. I'm gonna, after I do the pockets, I'm gonna have to fell that waistband edge again and that's gonna take like an hour or two, probably probably about an hour, but I'm not looking forward to it. But I did, um, I did edge the pockets. It's just a really tiny rolled hem. I have lace for the top edges that needs to get sewn down. I did make a whole bunch of masks while I was taking a break. Um, this isn't all of them, some of them have already gone to their like respective owners, but um, I did make one to match the dress and I think it's really cute and also super surreal as a concept <laughs> to make a face mask like this to match the dress that I'm making. I didn't have any of the of this scallopy lace that I've been using on the dress itself around the edges, but I found this one. It looks cute and it looks nice and I'm really happy with it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the lace onto the pockets and then pin them to the skirt and figure out, you know, where I want them and then measure and make sure that they're even and pin them down and sew them on and then I can go ahead and fell down that inner waistband edge again. So this took me like 20 minutes. I love apron pockets in that they are, they look cute and they're easy to attach but I hate apron pockets in that it takes forever to position them evenly on a skirt especially when it's not a gathered rectangle and it's like a circle or a half circle skirt. That's the worst and this took me like 20 minutes but I finally got them even and pinned in place and I'm just gonna top stitch down along where the seam already is and that's how I'm gonna attach these and I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and strong and then pockets done. Pockets done. Um, and I also went through and hand felled this edge again. Painful, but done. Um, so now I just have to put the zipper in the back, then add the buttons in the buttonholes, and I'm done.
Mar. Hehehe <laughs>